good evening everybody it's good again to come out and be able to have health and strength to come out and hopefully deliver something that will be um good for everybody um tonight a word came into me and it was only just one word and that generally is the way I come up with a message and that word tonight for some reason was the word conviction conviction um I know what the word conviction means it means to be found guilty convicted it would be like being convicted of um driving over the speed limit it could be uh guilty of uh drugs it could be guilty of murder i mean there's a lot of things that conviction is could mean a lot of things but I went and looked it up in the dictionary, and it actually meant the word helper, advisor. Uh, we're going to get into that just a little bit, but let me read you what it said in the dictionary. Now, the word conviction I did not find in the scripture. That's not to say that it's not there, but the... The app that I use did not show the word conviction in the scripture. Now, that's not to say that it's not there. But it says a formal declaration that someone is guilty of offense made by the verdict of a judge or jury in a court of law. Now let me read that again. A formal declaration that someone is guilty of offense made by the verdict of a judge or jury in a court of law. Now, There's some things that I wrote down that goes along with that. As I said a minute ago, the word guilt is goes along with the word conviction. Um, I could be convicted about doing something, something that I shouldn't do. It could be as simple as not attending church. That could be a conviction. Uh, when the Word of God says to assemble yourselves and you don't, you feel convicted. And no doubt there's times that I have felt very much convicted. Um, there's a scripture that uses uh, something that goes along with conviction and it's found in the book of 1 John if you want to take your Bible and go there it's found in 1 John now John the Revelator is writing this we're in the second chapter of 1 John I want you to look with me in verse 1 and verse 2 Verse 1 and verse 2 is the verses that we'll highlight tonight. It says, my little children. Now, he's when he says my little children, he's talking to people that are born again. People that are saved by the Spirit of God. If you happen to be out here tonight and you're not born again, this verse is not aimed at the person that is lost. It's only aimed at the person that is born again of the Spirit of God. It says, my little children, 
these things I write unto you. See, he's writing these to the people, the children of God that are reading this, that ye sin not. Now, what is he saying? He's saying, as a matter of principle, don't sin. And obviously, some people's going to say, well, Brother Ken, that's impossible. Well, I guess you could say that. Because it says here, and if any man sin, well, he just said up there that you sin not. Is it possible that we cannot sin? I guess it's possible. Is it highly unlikely that we're going to live in a perfected, perfect life? A lot of people think they live in a perfect life, but honestly, I don't think they as perfect as they think they are. Again, he's saying, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. Now, that's the first sentence that he's saying here. He wants us to take heed he wants us to take heed to that that first sentence. And then if you notice, and if any man sin, that word if is a conditional word. If means if. If we do sin, if we do sin, where it says right here, and if any man sin, we have an advocate. Now, we're going to talk about that as we go down. We're going to talk about what an advocate is. We have an advocate with the Father. Talking about the Father God, that advocate is Jesus Christ, the righteous, the one that had no sin the one that did not have sin. A lot of people will go and say, well, well, Ken, that's impossible. If he was a human being, he had sin. No, Jesus didn't have no sin. Jesus was without sin. And a lot of people, no doubt, probably wonder and think, no, no, Jesus had issues. No, he didn't. No, he come to be the offering for man. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Jesus Christ, the righteous, meaning he was in right standing with God, is what this verse is saying here, that if any man sin, we have an advocate. We have an advocate. which is Jesus Christ the righteous. And it goes on to say, and he is the propitiation. Now that's a big word. It's basically a word that could actually say he was the payment for our sins. See, he was our go-between. God knew that man was going to sin. God knew that man had the trait of sin in his body. But John up there said to do not sin. Well, there's a lot of people that they will tell you that they don't sin. But they got more sin than they realize. You know, one thing I heard my mama say that I've always used ever since I heard her say it. You had the sin of commission, and you also had the sin of omission. Commission is the things that you do. 
Omission is the things that you're guilty of that you don't do. It's still a sin. Sin is a sin. He's saying right here, and he is talking about Jesus to Christ now, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, not for his sin. When he went to the cross, he didn't die for his sin. He died for man's sins, for the whosoever sins. See, that word propitiation actually is basically a payment. He was a, he was a payment. Now, the, the Bible verse is, or the di uh, dictionary is, uh, is going to add a little bit to that word propitiation, but to simple it down, he is basically our payment. He is our advocate. That's what he says, because it says up there in verse 1, we have an advocate with the Father. And if he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, what does that mean? He came to be the sin payment for all of mankind. But mankind, some chooses to believe and some chooses not to believe. But Jesus still come to pay the sin payment for all men. And what's sad, it would be like the advocate coming and paying for the sin debt that man rejects. Ultimately, man rejects the sin payment that Jesus came to pay to please God the Father because if we're found in God the Father, then we have that advocate with the Father, and a lot of people don't have the advocate. I guess, in a way, that's the reason why I'm out here and why I'm saying these things. Again, conviction means guilt. Here's one thing that we get that we should get from these two verses. This is what I wrote down. God's word is true. You can count on God's word. Now, some people might go and say, well, Brother Ken, now that's your opinion. Well, I happen to believe that God's word is true. I've got enough evidence in my Bible to understand that God's word is true. Now, if you're in here and you're doubting me, you have a right to doubt me, but you have not the right to tell me that God's word is not true. You might not believe me, and that's your business, but God's word is true. You can take every word of the Bible and take it to the bank. Every word of the Bible is, is under the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Every jot, every tittle in the Bible is found in, in, that's found in God's word is true. God's word is true. See, some things you just believe by faith. You don't have to be beat over the head with it. When the Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God, why would God lie? Why would God tell a story to man? Here's the thing. God doesn't tell a story. Man has a hard time in believing what God said. God said, in the beginning, God. He allowed a man to write that down. In the beginning, God. He allowed Moses to jot that down. God felt like it was important to set the stage from the very get-go of the very first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God. So do I have a right in saying, well, now, you know, I don't really believe that. You can if you want to. But again, God's word is true. God's justice is fair. He's a fair God. He's not going to find somebody guilty that is not guilty. He's not going to look for guilt. 
just to have a, a mad uh, attitude about guilt. God's justice is fair. You know, there's a, a little judge, and I can't think of the man's name, but when I look at him on YouTube, he is a very compassionate little man that's been a judge for 30 or more years, 40 years, and I don't remember the man's name, but he has what I call the spirit of humility. He is a very giving judge. He, I believe he could be very, very harsh when he wanted to be, but he is also very, very compassionate. He doesn't make his rulings quickly, but his rulings basically sort of maybe goes against the grain to the wrong people, but he helps the other people that is found in that area, and that's what an advocate does. He is what I would consider a great advocate. Um, I, I wish I could think of the man's name, but I can't do it. But he's on YouTube and television, and, and they make a sort of a joke about the, the law and different things, but he knows the rules, and God's justice is fair. I believe that man there could actually be a fair judge, but see, he's a human being. He's capable of making a mistake. He's capable of making a wrong decision. God's ways are right. You don't have to question God's ways. A lot of people's going to get there and the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And some people's going to say, but Lord, wait. I was doing this and I was doing that and, and I was a good person and Lord, I went to church. Don't you remember I went to church and don't you remember this and don't you remember that? And I believe the Lord is going to let people sort of try to make their case, but then he's going to go and say, I have no record of your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And what's going to break his heart is when he says, depart from me. When all the time he wanted you to be his family, you didn't believe on him, and he's going to tell you to depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. It wasn't that I knew you at one time. Oh, he knew us when we was born. He knew us on the things that we did right and the things that we did wrong. But he also is looking at, did you believe in me? Was I your advocate? See, God knows if he is the advocate or not. God's ways are right. God sent man an advocate. We just read it up there in that first verse. Jesus Christ, the righteous, is our advocate. God sent man an advocate. He sent man an attorney. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God through the advocate is Jesus Christ the Lord. He is the payment for me and the payment for you. I don't have to use that word propitiation. He was my fill-in. He died in my place. Remember I held up the nail the other day? He took the form of the nails in his hands and feet so that he could buy me and so that he could pay for me. 
God sent man an advocate. Do you think he wants me to recognize the advocate? You think he wants me to honor the advocate? Man can believe in the payment of when Jesus died on the cross, but sad to say, many will not believe that Jesus died on the cross. Many will end up standing before the Lord without the advocate. And you know what that means? When you go and stand before the court, before the Lord Jesus Christ, he could have been your advocate. But on that day, when you stand before him, you will stand before him as him being the judge. He won't necessarily that day be the advocate. He will be your judge. Man can believe the payment that God sent to the earth. God did it. It was God. It was all done by God. He stands in man's place. He stood in my place when he went to that cross and took on them nails and took on the mocking and the abuse and the thorns and the beating and the whipping and the turmoil and the pain. And when he looked down from the cross and said, it is finished, he took everything for man so that he could be the advocate for man. But you know what? I've only had maybe one or two attorneys in my life. And every one of them made me sign a piece of paper. And it made me sign away some of my money for them to defend me. I never had to give Jesus a cent of my money. You know what makes Jesus my advocate? My believing in him. My belief in that advocate. He stands in man's place. He takes all of man's guilt. Every bit of it. Every bit of my guilt. Every bit of your guilt. Every bit of man's guilt. He's willing to remove it if we know the advocate. If we know the advocate. He's willing to remove all a man's guilt. I've got three questions. Is God convicting you? Is God convicting you? Do you know him as the advocate? That's what I mean by is God convicting you? Is God your advocate? You might be sort of telling yourself right now, is God my advocate? That's something you need to meditate on. You need to think about it. I'm asking the question. You deserve to hear the right answer. What would, what would God say to you if he wasn't your advocate? Does he want to be? Yes. He wants to be your advocate. You want me to tell you what gets him to be your advocate? Salvation gets him to be your advocate. When you get born again and you get saved, you get him as the advocate when you have salvation. That's the reason you hear me all the time talk about the word salvation. Salvation is what gets you into the family of God. Does that mean that you got to be perfect? No, I don't think it means that you got to be perfect, but you got to remember who the advocate is. The Bible says up here, and if any man sin, he first of all said that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And you know, the Lord is just wanting to be advocate before he returns. And I very well believe that he could very well be holding up his return in the clouds of glory because there's a few people that he's waiting on for those folks to make him advocate. He wants to be. 
he desires to be. You got to ask yourself that question. Is God your advocate? I hope that you can say that he is. Something to think about. Elderly ministry is how you get a hold of me. If you decide you want to talk, leave me your name, leave me your phone number. I'll get back with you. You can also reach me by YouTube. This is YouTube right here. You can reach me on YouTube if you decide to. I've got email, cell phone. Just look me up. If you've got anything you need to talk about, I'm a good listener. I won't throw the book at you. I'll tell you what the book says, though. And I'll let the Lord do the convicting, okay? Thank y'all for tuning in tonight.